Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to make UK Garage like Sammy Virgie. This project will be made available for free below and I have serum presets, samples and other project files available in the description. If you enjoyed this tutorial, drop a like and don't forget to subscribe. I'll also include the serum presets in the download as some of you don't use live. If you have any suggestions for artists you'd like me to cover, please comment below. However, the best way to request tutorials is via my Discord server and the link to join is in the description. This project is primarily based on Virgie's tracks Forever and Dance Floor of his recent album, but also draws influence from other tracks on the release. Let's get into it. Our BPM is 132, which is ideal for Garage. Our key is C minor, but I've added a note outside of the scale, which helps give the project more of a wonky feel as I'll show you later. We're looking at an eight bar loop for the kick. I made it from two separate layers and it's sort of 909 inspired. The low fundamental has been tuned to G1, G being the fifth note of the C minor scale. We have some drum bus for drive and to dampen down some of the high frequencies. Then we have a mono utility to ensure that the kick is fully mono and an EQ8 removing some low and boxy frequencies. As you can probably hear, we have a simple four to the floor kick drum pattern. For the claps. We have a clap and a reverse clap which are the same sample. A similar technique is used in Forever with a reverse before a clap. The clap doesn't have any processing on the chain. However, if we open the IOs, we can see that both samples are in the same choke group, meaning that when one plays, the other will be muted. The reverse clap has some light bit crushing applied via Redux and an EQ to remove some of the high frequencies created by Redux. On the channel, we have some drum bus to thicken things up and an EQ8 to remove low frequencies that we don't need. If we expand this, we can see that we have some signal being sent to send A, which is a short reverb, which as usual with these drier club tracks is this empty club preset. We go back to the clap, reveal the MIDI. We can see that the clap is hitting on the second and fourth beats with the reverse only happening at the beginning of every bar before the first clap. We have a two-step groove applied to the claps and also to the snares and hats as well. If we go over here to the groove pool, we can see that the timing and the velocity are both at about 40% as we want the drums to have a lot of swing, which is quite important to this style. Next, we have the snare sample, which I have tightened up using Simpler's ADSR envelope. I've also increased the attack a little so that the snare doesn't hit quite as hard on the channel. We have some bit crushing using Redux and some EQ8 removing both the nasty high frequencies and also unnecessary low frequencies. You can hear Virgie's use of a bit crush snare in Forever. We've panned the snare very slightly to the right. And again, we have reverb applied via Sende. For the MIDI, we have this triplety pattern. As you can see, I have the triplet grid turned on. If I turn the triplet grid off and move the snares 
on to non-triplet note divisions and listen in the mix. And then move them back. It's quite subtle, but putting the snares on triplet notes helps give the loop a greater sense of groove. Therefore, utilizing the triplet grid helps when trying to achieve the style of garage drums. And we'll see this with the hats in a sec as well. So for the hats. We have a closed hat and an open hat. As with the claps, the hats are choked to help them sound tighter. I've used the ADSR envelope within both instances of Simpler to tighten up these samples. On the closed hat chain, we have an EQ8 notching out a resonance. On the channel, we have some drum bus. Again, helping to thicken things up. And we have an EQ8 to remove low frequencies. We have reverb applied via Sende, and the hats have been panned to the left to create a sense of width. We're also using triplet note divisions here. With the second closed hat, and this helps create a similar swung feel to the snare, which kind of works with the two-step groove as well. The open hats are playing a simple offbeat house style pattern. Finally for the drums, we have a crash, which plays on the first beat of the eight bar loop, which I've run through drum bus and EQ, similar to the other cymbals. And this has also been sent to reverb and panned to the right a little. I'm just going to solo all of the drums so you can hear them on their own. We have three different bases. I'll solo the group and then go through the individual channels. For all three bases, I use an EQ spitting multiband processing technique, which I use for most of my bases in most of my videos. An in-depth breakdown of this technique will appear on the screen now. First, we have this low Reese. The sub is a pure sine wave. Like with all the bases in this project, Serum is monophonic. On the channel, we have a compressor to ensure consistency and then an EQ3 to cut out any high frequencies. For the top, we have a sine wave that has been unison detuned to seven. I've also pushed the attack out a little bit. I've split the frequency bands further using EQ3 into mids and high layers. For the mids, we have an overdrive to emphasize the mid range. We have bass monoing to narrow the bass's stereo image and the frequency splitting EQ. And on the high band, we just have the frequency splitting EQ3. For the MIDI, we have a C, which is being held for two beats at the beginning of every other bar. So bar one, bar three, and for bars five and seven. Next, we have this 808. This is like the 808 used in my so his video and has been made with operator. For the sub layer, we have a sine wave with a pitch envelope used to create attack. We then have a compressor and an EQ to split the frequency areas. For the top layer, we've added some filter saturation within operator. On the chain, we have a saturator and an amp 
to help thicken the sound up. Then we have an EQ3, which has been used to split the frequency bands. And then finally, we have an auto filter. As the saturator and amp create a lot of nasty high frequencies, which we're using the auto filter to cut out. For the MIDI, we have this sort of eighth note focus pattern, which starts on the third beat of every first bar. So first bar, third bar. For the first repetition, we're using the root note and the third and then the root note again. But on the second repetition, we have this flattened root note or major seventh. This is part of what gives the project its sort of wonkier feel as B isn't in the C minor scale. And the final bass is this bass line inspired wub. Again, as with the first patch, we have the compressed sine wave subversion of the top patch. We have the EQ3 again. Then for the top, we're using FM synthesis utilizing two sine waves. Oscillator A has been taken down by two octaves and its warp menu being modulated by LFO1. You can see it says FM from B, which means oscillator A is being modulated by oscillator B. LFO1 is on envelope mode. You can see we have a short attack, which is good for these sort of more wobby bases. The LFO's rate is one over two. Oscillator B has its level turned down to zero, which means we're only getting the effect of the FM. In the effects window, we have some hyperdimension, which adds some subtle width and detuning. The processing on the mid and high chains is very similar to the low reese, which we looked at before, with just overdrive and monoing on the mid channel. And then we have the splitting EQs on the mid and high chains. At the end of the chain, we have an EQ8 removing some mid range. For the MIDI, we have this 16th note pattern, which is inspired by dance floor. Now for the bass groups, that's everything together. The bass group has some EQ to remove any rumble and a rack to sidechain the low frequencies using the kick as a trigger, which we can see if we solo the kick. We also have reverb applied via Sande. Normally I do a lot more processing on the bass bus, compression, maybe chorus, but I'm trying to keep this video straightforward. Next, we have this Cork M1 inspired organ lead. We have oscillator A, which is a unison detuned sine wave taken down by an octave. You can see the unison is at three and then oscillator B, which has been taken up by seven semitones, which is a perfect fifth. We have this pluck shaped envelope, which is also modulating the cutoff of a low pass filter. On the channel, we have a little bit of saturation just to add a little bit of character and EQ to remove any low frequencies that might interfere with the kick or the bass. And then we have some bass monoing up to 500 Hertz to try and ensure that the patch is more mono compatible. And we have the reverb on Sende, like with many of the other channels. For the MIDI, 
we have a sparse pattern. It's kind of meant to complement the vocal chops. Again, we have B, which isn't in the C minor scale. Next, we have this scratch effect. Something I noticed Virgie using in a few tracks. It bookends the eight bars acting as a stop as all the other elements drop out around it. We have a saturator with pretty similar settings to the organ lead, I think. And then we have an EQ8 removing any low frequencies we don't want. You may be able to hear that the scratch has quite a lot of low frequencies. And I felt that they made the sample overly boomy. Again, we have reverb applied via Send A. Then we have the first set of vocal chops. I chopped these up from a longer sample. I've used the auto pan to make the chops more staccato, although they still work in the mix if you turn this off. So this is with the auto pan on. And off. What I've done with the auto pan here is put the phase at zero. So it just affects the volume and not the panning. We have some saturation. And then we also have a low cut, like with many of the other channels within the project. We have the reverb again. In fact, reverb is on all the remaining vocal channels, as you can see, always via Send A in this project. I'm going to play both the vocal channels. The channel labeled Vox Phrase has the same processing as Vox Chops, but without the auto pan. And finally, there's this wrapped vocal chop at the end. But it makes a bit more sense if we listen in the mix. The little wrap chop at the end is to add a bit more variation. The chain is identical to the Vox Phrase channel. So melodic chops are an important part when making this type of garage. So my advice for those who want to make this style will be to chop up acapellas or vocal phrases, choosing the words or phrases you like best, and then rearranging them. In this case, I wrote the bass line first, which helped give me a bit of direction. And that's it for this video. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Maybe we'll